Okay, so due to several requests on the uh, LEGO train group uh, that I'm a admin on, uh, after I showed uh, the results of reversing the polarity on a power functions motor by simply uh, changing the wires inside the motor, um, some people asked me to do a video on that. So here it is. It's going to be a short and quick, easy video on how to change the wire polarity inside a standard power functions train motor. All right, the first thing I did is I went to Lowe's and I picked up this handy dandy little star drive tool with uh, changeable bits uh, because it's uh, really tricky to get the screws out unless you have exactly the right bit. So this came with a variety of different bits and one of them happens to be the perfect, perfect one for removing the screws that hold this thing together. So first step in any modification obviously is to get it open so you can do the insides and get those out. Okay, and then I just kind of skip forward because it's kind of boring to watch somebody just removing screws. So after you remove the last screw, the bottom pops right off and there you can see the motor connected to the wiring on each side, which goes, that's what goes to the connector where it gets its power and all the gears. So basically just remove the axles and the gears so that you can get that motor out in order to be able to work on it comfortably. Okay, now there we go and that shows you how that goes. Next step is simply to plug in the soldering iron that I'll be using. It looks to be a just a standard soldering iron, uh, a weller. I'm not sure what the wattage is on it. It's a soldering iron I've had just basically sitting around since I was a high school electronics student. So anyway, we'll plug that in, let that get warmed up, and then we'll just change out the wires. Okay, now that the soldering iron's warmed up, basically just touch it to the to the solder to get it melted and remove the wire from the connector. Very simple. And then you just do the same thing on the other side. like so. Once it's disconnected, um, all I'm going to do is uh, clean up the solder a little bit on uh, on these connectors. To and, and I'll show you, they're little metal connectors with holes in them for the wires to go in. So I'm just going to soften up that solder and then just uh, you poke the wires right back through those holes and you're good to go. Okay, just warm up the solder, get that nice and fluid again, nice and and then just stick that wire right to the connector just like that and then we'll flip it around do the other side one thing I'm not doing in this video that I highly recommend is if you have um, the ability to get a clamp of some sort to hold the motor in place while you're working so it doesn't slide around as much like it's doing on me here um, if you had a workbench you have a a little bit more organized place to work perhaps it's probably not a bad idea you don't want this jumping around too much while you're working and that's it as far as replacing and switching the wiring that's all it takes and that eliminates the need for using Lego's um, direction reverser or polarity reversing switch I guess they call it um, so it saves you a little bit of money and a whole bunch of space in your build. The reason I did this originally was um, that I wanted to put two motors on my 10 219 um, Maersk train. And by adding the polarity switch in it, it uh, the, the assembly of the motor and the switch extended into the, into the cab 
and remove the seat. And I'm one of those guys, I actually like to have a little Lego minifigure driving my trains. I think it looks a lot cooler to have a guy in there. So I wasn't happy with that solution, so I decided to try something different. So the next step is simply the reassembly of, of the, the one difficulty I have found is that you need to put the motor back in and the capacitor goes in a different place now. It's going to actually interfere a little bit with getting it all to fit properly. So you kind of have to finagle it a little bit. But you, and then you get your uh, your little the axles, little wire axles with the with the uh, with the gears back in where they go. There's the one. I'm gonna put that one in the wrong way. A lot of this that I'm doing here is trial and error and again just trying to get the motor to fit a certain way and getting all the all the wiring back in. I find that to be the most annoying part. The actual electrical part of it as you can see is pretty straightforward. So now that one's down in there. So once the connector's in the motor fits exactly where it needs to fit nice and tight down in there and then it's just a matter of starting to reassemble the, the gearing. which is, works probably a lot better if you don't have chunky fingers. And that wheel set goes in like that. This one goes like that. And it's just a matter of arranging the capacitor off to the side, out of the way, moving the wiring out of the way, like that. The lid, something on. And this is the part that I found to be the most uh, trial and error type part of it was getting it, all the parts to fit back in properly once um, once it was assembled. So I think what I did on the other motor I did is kind of tuck the capacitor off to the side as much as possible. There we go. Closes up, the wheels turn. So that's just a matter of closing it back up by putting the, the screws back in. And there you go. You have a perfectly nice, perfectly functional reversed motor without having to use the reversing switch. So just one thing I do, the other thing I do is when, the last step is when I'm completely done is I will take a silver or gold or bright colored sharpie marker and I draw a big R on the bottom of the motor. That way I know instantly which of my motors are reversed and which ones are not. So I'll just take that and mark a big R right there. Um, but what this lets me do, like I said, it lets me put two motors that don't require the reversing switch. They'll be pointed in opposite directions but they'll run in the same direction with the same control. I'll put them on the same channel for the um, remote control. So when I tell train to go forward, both motors will go forward regardless of the fact that this one will actually be pointing in the opposite direction than the other one. Um, like I said, it saves me the space of and the expense of having the Lego reversing switch in the locomotive. I put two motors in each locomotive. Um, and I like, I like to see really long trains run. So this will let me put, for example, two diesel locomotives at the head of a train and actually each locomotive will have two motors. So it'll be a total of four motors pulling a really heavy train and I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. This is only the second one of these motors I've done um, but I'll probably do that for every one of my locomotives that'll be powered it'll have one regular motor and one that's been reversed like this. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this I hope it was helpful um, I apologize for the any audio or video quality issues this is the first video I've done like this um, hopefully it won't be the last if I come up with any other interesting ideas that I think might be helpful and that you guys want to see um, I'll do more and um, if you have any ideas for anything else that you might want me to try to do and do it on video to show how it might be done, uh, let me know uh, in the comments below or um, I'm also going to post this on the uh, Trains Facebook group uh, that I'm one of the admins on. 
and uh, feel free to comment there. Um, any criticism or critiques or uh, constructive or otherwise, uh, I'm eager to hear what you guys think. All right, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll talk to you later.